Today, we would like to show you one of the experiments from our new product line HM250 Fundamentals of Fluid Mechanics for an overview of the entire program and its general features and benefits make sure to check out our introductory video for this series first for today's video we have chosen the experiment measurement of flow profiles of course as with any experiment in a laboratory environment the students should familiarize themselves with the theory behind the experiment as well as with the operating procedures for the respective units one of the great advantages of the integrated HMI of this new product line is that this content is displayed in an interactive way, including pictorial setup instructions for the experiment. Thanks to the Wi-Fi capability, this content can be displayed on up to 10 separate units individually. This is the home screen under the info section of the HMI. When you choose fundamentals, you get a description of flow profiles through pipes including a formula for the Reynolds number and a definition of the critical Reynolds number. On the following page, terms like flow resistance, pipe friction, boundary layer, the so-called non-slip condition, velocity gradients and flow profile are explained. The difference between a laminar profile with no perpendicular mixing to the main flow direction and turbulent flow, including the transition area with variable flow conditions are shown including easy to understand diagrams. On the following pages, the actual experiment is described, including the internal calculation of the flow velocity via the difference between the measured static and dynamic pressures along the pipe diameter. With these values, the Reynolds number of the respective flow form is determined. When we want to conduct the experiment, we select the individual experimental unit from the movable storage system take it out, and as you can see, it's very light, and put it straight on top of the HM250 experimental unit. Via the integrated chip, the base unit automatically recognizes the experiment. In order to set up the experiment properly, we simply follow the on-screen experiment setup instructions. After the unit has been set up properly following the on-screen setup instructions, it's time to start the experiment. We want to measure the flow profile within this pipe. For this purpose, we have a measuring probe, which is adjusted in its height along a vertical path. The position is indicated here in the display and also transferred into the data acquisition system. For the experiment to start, we're going to turn on the pump manually like so. And as you can see, there is a lot of flow and uh, presumably this is going to be turbulent flow. So we are going to adjust the pump capacity to, say, 40%. Uh, it is important to wait until the pump flow has been stabilized. This can take up to one minute. After we have a stable pump flow, and the reading for the pressure measurement is stable as well, it is time to plot our first measurement into the graph, like so. Once that's done, we can adjust the position of the needle in increments of, say, one millimeter or thereabouts, like so. It is important to wait a little bit until the pressure reading has stabilized again. We suggest a minute or so. Once again, after the pressure reading for the measurement has stabilized, we can plot this measurement point into the graph as well. Now, this step is repeated for as many points in as little increments as you wish until you get a proper graph. Once we have taken enough measurements, the result is a uh, parabolic flow profile, as can be expected for laminar flow. At any time during the experiment, you can take a screenshot, like so, which will be automatically saved as a JPEG on the uh, memory stick. After the experiment is completed, we can download the data 
and you can rename the file as you wish. Confirm and the measurement data will be saved on the memory stick. That was the first part of the experiment where we plotted a flow profile for laminar flow. Let's try to get the same for turbulent flow. For this, we will change the pump capacity to 100%, like so. And as you can see here, we have a lot more flow through the pipe. Then we bring the probe back to the zero position, right at the bottom of the pipe. Like so. Wait for the pressure measurement to stabilize and plot our first measurement into the graph. After you have taken a sufficient number of measurements, you can see that when you plot them into the profile, you get a nice graph showing the flow profile in the pipe. For the purpose of this video, we will calculate the Reynolds number for the first part of our experiment. After importing the experiment data, which you have saved directly from the HM250 base unit onto a memory stick, into your preferred spreadsheet program, it may look like this. For the purpose of this video demonstration, let's focus on one particular measurement, let's say at the center position of our pipe. Here we calculate the velocity at the respective position in the pipe from the measured dynamic pressure. This is a calculation which is automatically done by the PLC of the unit, so technically speaking it is not necessary for the evaluation, but it explains the fundamentals behind the experiment. With a measured value for the dynamic pressure at the center position, we get a velocity of 0.68 meters a second, which is exactly the value in our data table. For the calculation of the Reynolds number as per formula 3, we need the mean flow velocity. It's important to note that the mean flow velocity is not the average value of our measurements along the diameter of the pipe. It is rather the average velocity across the entire internal cross-section of our pipe. In order to determine this velocity, we simply divide the measured flow rate by the cross-section area like so. With our measured values, we get an average flow velocity of 0.38 meters per second. The value for the kinematic viscosity of water at 21.5 degrees Celsius can be found in the literature as 0.96 times 10 to the power of minus 6 square meters per second. With that, our Reynolds number becomes 1,989. This is under the critical Reynolds number of 2,300 and therefore, the flow profile in our pipe should be laminar. Let's see how that compares to our experiment. For that, we simply plot our values for the measured velocities over the indexed radius like so, and voila, we have indeed a nice laminar flow profile. As you have seen, our new HM250 product line is the perfect vehicle to demonstrate through repeatable, robust results, the theories behind fluid mechanics. In your practical teaching environment, plus you have the added capability of remote access. We hope you enjoyed this uh, short video of a practical experiment uh, within our HM250 series of equipment. For further information, make sure to visit www.gund.de.